Chapter 2701 Submission The young crown prince consort gazed expressionless, her voice devoid of emotion, I am quite reasonable. Eunuch Chen, who had accompanied them through the main doors of the butterfly pavilion, couldn't help but twitch his mouth at this statement. I'm not here to negotiate a smooth handover, declared the young crown prince consort icily, I am commanding you all to execute a swift handover today. Is that understood? Dot. The elderly shopkeeper of Butterfly Pavilion was now a mixture of anger and bewilderment, teetering on the edge of confusion. In his role as the shopkeeper of Butterfly Pavilion, his monthly stipend alone amounted to a staggering 80,000 spirit currency. Slash where on earth did he manage to secure such a hefty monthly stipend from question mark slash slash how could he bear the thought of losing it in a matter of mere months question mark slash the aged shopkeeper's eyes pleaded with Auntie King for assistance while Auntie King's outrage paralleled his own. She was cornered. Slash what recourse did she have when the crown prince consort insisted on this course and had even brought an entourage to oversee the transition question mark slash. Slash the building and land deeds of Butterfly Pavilion were unequivocally in the young crown prince consort's name. Could she possibly contest that question mark slash. Her mounting frustration became a throbbing headache, leaving her at a loss. With several deep breaths. Auntie King looked at the young crown prince consort and implored, Crown prince consort, wouldn't it be too hasty to finalize the handover within a single day? Her only recourse was to buy time through delay tactics. Auntie King harbored an inner reluctance to relinquish the management of Butterfly Pavilion, a business she had painstakingly nurtured. Why was it that during the lean years of Butterfly Pavilion? She had diligently partnered with the consort to nurture the business. She had racked her brains to devise strategies for its expansion. Slash and what had the young crown prince consort done in comparison? Simply by inheriting her mother's dowry, she was now entitled to claim all the assets and reap the rewards of her hard work, transforming this modest shop into a thriving enterprise? Question mark slash. A chill glanced across the crown prince consort's features as she fixed her gaze upon Auntie King. It was clear that challenges were inevitable as they attempted to effect the transition of power. Mukinu maintained a veneer of civility, yet her subordinates had been uncooperative, swathed in excuses that only served to aggravate her. Today, you and Mr. Hong will meticulously review the financial records. Additionally, you and shopkeeper who shall facilitate the comprehensive handover of Butterfly Pavilion's operations, inside and out, the young crown prince consort stated impassively, her voice devoid of emotion. Don't feign ignorance, hesitate, or deceive me. If you believe that my youth makes me susceptible to bullying, Kiyamu's gaze slid to Li Yi, who stood nearby. With swift precision, Li Yi drew his sword and brought it crashing down upon a nearby black wooden table cleaving it with a resounding snap. As shards scattered, a palace wept through the onlookers who hastily retreated. Slash the readiness to draw her sword at a moment's notice was undeniably chilling. Slash. Li Yi remained unmoved, his tone unwavering. You're welcome to test the steel in my hand. Auntie King's heart quivered, and she stumbled backward, her steps faltering. Her gaze flickered, a mixture of awe and uncertainty directed at the crown prince consort before her. Inhaling deeply, she offered a respectful salute. Understood. Today's agenda demanded compliance, without question. For if they resisted, judging by the crown prince consort's past conduct, the prospect of meeting out collective punishment to these rebels was not beyond consideration. Slash no room for sentiment when one's life hung in the balance. Slash. Auntie King pivoted and noticed the elderly shopkeeper's obstinate demeanor, signaling his intent to cause a scene once more. She leveled a stern gaze at him. Proceed with the handover. The elderly shopkeeper, surnamed Jang, visibly reddened at her command. His eyes welled with a mixture of indignation and frustration. Chapter 2702 The Couture House. He expressed his extreme dissatisfaction, saying, Auntie King, I believe I've devoted countless efforts to the Butterfly Pavilion over these years, having to manage everything myself. What possible reason could they have for rejecting me, a mere shopkeeper? Without uttering another word, Li Yi moved forward to address the chattering shopkeeper. Shopkeeper who? Present. Shopkeeper who hurriedly followed after them. Dot. 
It remained unclear how Lee admonished the elderly shopkeeper, but shopkeeper who soon began to cooperate more smoothly. The original accountant of Butterfly Pavilion also obediently accompanied Mr. Hong to settle their accounts. Kiam Yu gestured towards two managing aunties and seven to eight agile young girls to inspect the older maids and workers within Butterfly Pavilion. There was no need to dismiss the assistants who were in charge of food and dishwashing. Kiao Mu instructed her team to first manage the accountant and other essential tasks. As for the staff below, if they were inclined to cause trouble, they could be dismissed. If they were dedicated to their roles, they were welcome to stay. It was of no consequence. In less than an hour, the transition of power within Butterfly Pavilion proceeded in an organized manner. Kiao Mu then led the remaining group to another prosperous establishment on Chiel Boulevard, Couture House. Before departing, Kiao Mu noticed Auntie King's reluctance and casually remarked, Come along to Couture House. Auntie King was seething with anger, her frustration palpable, yet she was powerless to act. It appeared that the young Crown Prince consort intended to oversee the transfer of these shops and estates from every angle. Kiao Mu was meticulous in adhering to formalities throughout the process. They promptly arrived at Couture House with their entourage. After applying some pressure, they managed to secure presence of the new shopkeeper and accountant. Auntie King couldn't resist breaking free from the group and remarked with nonchalance, Running Couture House is far more intricate than managing Butterfly Pavilion. After all, Butterfly Pavilion primarily dealt with food and beverages. The young Crown Prince consorts takeover and continuation of the existing recipes worked relatively well, allowing Auntie King to maintain her composure. However, Couture House specialized in the sale of jewelry and beauty products. Slash. Without the innovative designs and concepts provided by the consort, Without the personalized makeup and perfumes crafted by the consort herself, well, let's see how long Couture House could sustain itself. Slash. The Crown Prince Consort, the young Crown Prince Consort, meticulously toured every corner of the sprawling Couture House. It must be acknowledged that eldest Madame Mew's strategies were remarkably distinct. Unlike other shops, where valuable items like jewelry would be securely locked inside display cases, Couture House took a different approach. Even more remarkably, customers were guided to the second floor for their shopping experience. The jewelry and cosmetics in her store were all elegantly presented on the walls, forming a stunning visual array that immediately caught one's attention. Interested in a specific piece of jewelry? Just provide its serial number, and a youthful and charming shop assistant would be at your service to retrieve it. The styles and designs were all exceptionally contemporary. The most precious jewelry even adorned circular crystal shelves at the center of the shop. These treasures were separated by transparent protective barriers, allowing customers to admire their splendor up close. The second floor, accessible only to esteemed female clientele, was reserved for those of distinguished status. By the time Kia Mu and her team entered, a handful of young ladies were already perusing the selection with the assistance of their maid servants. Upon catching sight of Kiao Mu, a woman among the customers couldn't contain her excitement and blurted out, Is that the Crown Prince consort? Chen Bo Ji shot an impolite glare at Jixiang, her companion, who was causing a commotion beside her. She inwardly sighed, thinking, Slash bringing along this fool was a terrible idea. Slash, Chapter 2703 I won't give you face. Jixiang's complexion slightly grew paler. She found herself developing an odd habit lately. Whenever she encountered the Crown Prince Consort and the young Crown Prince Consort, a wave of flustered anxiety washed over her without reason, causing her palms to moisten. Slash it was a strange reaction, almost as if she could sense a change in the Crown Prince Consort's mood exclamation mark slash dot. She certainly didn't dare to provoke this formidable young highness. Previously, at General Zong Lai's estate, they used to mock the Crown Prince consort together. However, each time, Jixiang ended up humiliated by the well-prepared Crown Prince consort. Slash but that water under the bridge now. Subsequently, the noble ladies schemed to captivate and provoke the Crown Prince consort. Slash. But their efforts only left the Crown Prince consort unscathed while they ended up stung by bees and buried under quilts, wailing like children in distress.
The most horrifying part was when swarms of mosquitoes burst forth from the angry hornets. These mosquitoes not only spewed flames but also exploded on contact, leaving them wailing like children for their parents. Many noble ladies even lost their hair to the fiery blasts. Jixiang was among the worst affected. The quilt commotion had caused her hair to dry out and her body bore significant injuries. She had spent days recovering. Hearing that a fresh collection of jewelry had arrived at the couture house, her curiosity got the better of her, luring her out to take a look, but what she hadn't anticipated was running into the crown prince consort and the young crown prince consort. Tears welled up in Jixiang's eyes as she fought the urge to cry. Summoning her courage, she approached Kiao Mu and respectfully curtsied. Greetings to the crown prince consort. Kiao Mu glanced at her with a touch of dry amusement. Yes, yes. No need for formalities. Jixiang breathed a sigh of relief. While the young crown prince consort exuded an icy demeanor, it seemed she had no intention of making her uncomfortable. In reality, Jixiang had no need to fret. Kiao Mu was the kind of individual who would only react strongly if you deliberately provoked her, bringing your misfortune upon yourself. Slash moreover, once she exacted her revenge, the most she would do is disregard you the next time she crossed paths with you. There would be no further reprisals. Dot slash slash if you refrained from provoking her, there was no reason for her to fly off the handle and strike. Dot slash has the crown prince consort come to reclaim the couture house today? Slash who in the capital wasn't aware of the tumult caused by the crown prince consort at the Mu clan's ancestral residence, where she reclaimed her mother's dowry and assets? Question mark slash. As Jixiang sought a conversational opening, the young crown prince consort cast her a casual glance and nodded indifferently. On the periphery, Chen Bojia clenched her teeth and managed a forced smile. Stepping forward, she also bowed with a gracious expression. Greetings to the crown prince consort. Had it not been for Jixiang's impulsive greeting, they might have easily pretended to have not noticed the crown prince consort and dispensed with such formalities. Though Chen Bo Jia seethed inwardly, her exterior demeanor was even more radiant. The young crown prince consort recognized Chen Bo Jia. Certainly, his impression of her was unfavorable. This individual was none other than Empress Daijia Chen's grandniece. From the moment she entered the crown prince's estate, she had dispatched Junior Yuna Kli to gauge the depths of Kiao Mu's tolerance. Slash she even audaciously attempted to take up residence in the Crown Prince's estate and win over her husband! Exclamation mark slash slash it was evident that she had not left a positive impression! Exclamation mark slash Kiao Mu's countenance grew even colder. She didn't permit Chen Bo Jia to rise and merely regarded her with chilly detachment. Jix Siang's heart jolted causing her to instinctively shrink back as a tremor of fear coursed through her. She curiously assessed Chen Bojia's demeanor. Back then, both of them had provoked the crown prince consort. What Jik Siang hadn't foreseen was that while the crown prince consort's attitude towards her appeared somewhat acceptable, she was shockingly impolite to Chen Bojia. Slash had something transpired between the two that she was unaware of? Question mark slash. Chen Bojia clenched her teeth summoning a strained smile. She lowered her head and slightly bent her knees, her voice tinged with anguish. Crown Prince Consort? Without sparing her a glance, the young Crown Prince Consort directly led her entourage out of the couture house, to the next shop. Chapter 2704 Scared out of her wits, Chen Bojia's lips quivered with anger as she watched Kiao Mu walk away without a backward glance. Frustration surged within her, and she couldn't help but stomp her foot turning to Jixiang with blame evident in her voice. This is all you're doing. Why did you even bother greeting that woman? Slash made her suffer such humiliation. Slash her age was so intense that her entire body trembled with it. Jixiang was also perplexed and inquired, Bojia, what exactly transpired between you and the crown prince consort? Dot. Chen Bojia responded gravely. What do you think happened? It's all because that person is so petty and can't bear the presence of the Empress Dowager. I possess more pride than she ever will. Since the entrance of the Crown Prince Consort into the palace, the Empress Dowager hadn't summoned her even once. Instead, it was Chen Bojia who practically visited the palace every day, sharing meals and conversations with the Empress Dowager. 
wasn't it Chen Bojia who had gained more favor in the Empress Daija's eyes? This realization somewhat eased Chen Bojia's anger. She shot a cold glance at the now empty shop and snorted, her lips curling with disdain. I believe there's no need for you to set foot in this couture house again. Bojia, why would you say that? Jixiang queried in shock. Did this person lack any semblance of intelligence? Chen Bojia cast her a disappointed look and said. The inexperienced crown prince consort has now reclaimed this shop. Consider this, can a village girl possibly manage a couture house? Does she comprehend the ever-changing trends in jewelry? Can she discern the suitable beauty products for the young ladies of our esteemed noble families? Chen Bojia scoffed. She knows nothing and impulsively snatched this couture house away from eldest Madame Mew. I fear this couture house won't endure for much longer. It's bound to be squandered by her sooner or later. Bojia. Jixiang tightly gripped her own sleeves, her voice timid as she glanced at Chen Bojia. Perhaps we should speak more carefully. Chen Bojia rolled her eyes in exasperation. You let a mere scare at their Zhongli estate terrify you to this extent. Let's leave. Jixiang promptly trailed behind them as they exited the couture house. Once back at the estate, Chen Bojia summoned her personal maid servant. Gather two servants and head to Chengel Boulevard. Procure a few ruffians to help me spread some rumors. Let it be known that the crown prince consort, that rustic girl from the village, acted haughty. She's clueless about what's fitting and coerced her mother into surrendering Couture House. Being from a remote mountain village in the lower star domain, she lacks refined taste. This Couture House will likely lose its former appeal. Only girls from similar villages would consider buying from such an establishment. Chen Bojia's words dripped with sarcasm and disdain. Her personal maidservant was well versed in the animosity between the young lady and the crown prince consort. She nodded, veiling her face as she led the two servants down the alleys of Chingal Boulevard to locate suitable troublemakers. In the end, despite an exhaustive search, the two hired hoodlums remained elusive. Upon learning that their task involved tarnishing the crown prince consort's reputation, the remaining duo turned ashen and vanished like startled rabbits. It was as though a spectre chased them, leaving no trace behind. Chen Bojia's personal maidservant suppressed her smoldering frustration and reported the situation upon returning. Chen Bojia found herself at a loss. Nevertheless, after her encounter with Kiao Mu, she was far from inclined to let matters rest. As a result, she extended invitations to numerous young misses, claiming a friendly gathering at the Chen estate. Skillfully, she shared the news regarding the Couture House, making it seem casual and unintentional. Chapter 2705 Critical Incident In just a short afternoon, the aristocratic women of the patrician family got wind of the change in ownership at the Couture House. The clock had struck ten in the evening, casting an ambience as though Kiao Mu was leisurely wandering through a garden. After perusing the myriad dowry shops owned by Mother Long and Long Chuan, she inspected the sprawling farmland and the various estates. It wasn't until she had ensured that all the necessary personnel for property transfer were in position that she returned to the Mu estate, accompanied by Li Yi. Keiksi the embroiderer, Keiki, and the rest of the entourage. Despite an entire day of strolling, the young one's vitality remained unyielding. Dot. Your Highness of the Crown Prince, Zhao Tengdong approached, bowing before swiftly conveying, His Majesty has decreed that His Highness will spend the night in the southern study for political deliberations. Upon hearing this, a subtle furrow formed on the brow of the youthful Crown Prince's consort, internally critiquing. Although the sentiment didn't manifest on her visage, she mustered a mirror before dismissing eunuch Zhao. Observing from the sidelines, palace lady Jing couldn't help but admire. Without prolonging eunuch Zhao's presence to inquire about the pressing matters the crown prince was engrossed in within the southern study, the crown prince's youthful consort displayed a clear comprehension of her boundaries. Even if reluctance was inherent, her countenance remained impassive. Weary, the young one sprawled onto the bed, gesturing with a wave to disband the retinue. Retrieving a messenger jade tablet from her inner sanctum, she read the lines of minuscule characters that floated there. Dearest, I shall return early tomorrow morning. Partake heartily in sustenance and retire early. Her Excellency Lady Kiao Kiao, rolled her eyes, 
utterly indifferent toward personal grooming, plunging onto the bed to embrace slumber directly. On the ensuing day, as Kiao Mu unveiled her eyes, she sensed a cranium nuzzling against her own locking eyes with him, that individual was grinning at her, distinctly from his habitual style, you're quite the fragrance, he jestingly jabbed her petite countenance, meticulously surveying her clothing, which she had retained even while surrendering to sleep. Kiao Mu felt an immediate flush of embarrassment. She had returned yesterday, brimming with enthusiasm, eager to share the day's battle outcomes with him. Yet little did she know that he wouldn't return at all. In an instant, her enthusiasm waned, and the weariness accumulated from navigating challenges throughout the day washed over her. Fatigue won, and she surrendered to sleep without further ado. Could her displeasure be attributed to my absence? prompting her to retire in vexation, slash he hit the nail on the head exclamation mark slash. However, Her Excellency Lady Kiyokiya refused to concede. After a teasing eye roll in his direction, Kiyao Mu attempted to rise with a subtle rustle. To her surprise, he scooped her up in the embrace of a quilt, bouncing off the bed. Kiyokiya, it's time to shake off the habit of morning silence, slash shake it off my foot exclamation mark slash, you're probably thinking, shake it off my foot, Kiao Mu, you're quite the rebel, Kiao Kiao, Crown Prince Mo held her from behind, his head nuzzling against her neck affectionately, everything go as planned yesterday, Kiao Mu felt a surge of renewed energy, yet her memory of his absence last night hindered her willingness to acknowledge him, with an indignant huff, she turned her head away. The crown prince concealed a hidden amusement. Gently encircling her, he nestled his head against her neck. I'm sure it all went smoothly. With Akiyoki Ao in charge, resolutions naturally find their way. Slash exactly exclamation mark slash the young one swiveled to meet his gaze and inquired, Your father likely didn't deliberately detain you for the night, did he? The crown prince instinctively found humor in the assumption and shook his head. Not at all. Guiding her to take a seat before the elegant dressing table, he retrieved a delicately crafted comb made of purple ruby ivory and began to gently work it through her cascading hair. Yesterday, we were taken aback by a report. It stated that a small city named Luwan City, not far from the border town where we disembarked in the Divine Province, was suddenly besieged by a series of monster attacks. Chapter 2706 Advanced to Level Completed I spent my time in the southern study, engrossed in studying the details. I also briefed father about the concept of heavenly fate and the situation with the zombies. Kiao Mu nodded, recognizing the significance of this matter. She understood the urgency of conveying it to the emperor promptly. She was also determined to prevent the vast divine province from falling into turmoil like Saikong planet had in the past. Dot. To be fair, Saikong Planet's situation was far better than what she had experienced in her previous life. At the very least, their zombie outbreak was not as dire as it had been in her previous existence. She believed that by managing this issue carefully, she could exert a degree of control over the situation. Did your father respond in any way? Him? He seemed rather surprised. Crown Prince Mo said with a hint of disdain, recollecting how his father had reached out to him the previous night. Such an ignorant man. A chuckle escaped Kiao Mu as she observed the expression on the Crown Prince's face. The situation in Luan City demands our utmost attention. Crown Prince Mo continued without pause. He skillfully fashioned his wife's hair into a simple yet lively bun, then selected a hairpin from the box a Viscount creation he had personally crafted. Without hesitation, he adorned her hair with it. Crown Prince Mo's eyes brightened as his wife emerged from behind the screen, wearing a translucent purple gown. He extended his hand to clasp her waist. Kiao Kiao, you become more captivating with each passing day. Kiao Mu didn't blush like other young women might in such a situation. Rather, a sense of self-satisfaction welled within her. She agreed wholeheartedly with Crown Prince Mo's assessment. I intend to conduct an inspection of the shop's progress today, overseeing the handover, Kiao Mu declared, lifting her delicate chin. I'll accompany you. Time to get some sleep, 
Kiao Mu remarked with a swift glance in his direction. Slash didn't this person pull an all-nighter? Shouldn't he catch up on his sleep? Question mark slash. Crown Prince Mo playfully held her dainty hand. I'll catch up on my sleep in the carriage. No need. We have that palace banquet to attend tonight. You won't have the energy. Kiao Mu pulled at his sleeve. Go and rest. Crown Prince Mo's eyes sparkled. He embraced Kiao Mu and inquired tenderly. Kiao Kiao, are you feeling sorry for your hobby? Kiao Mu gave him a look that clearly said, don't be absurd. She playfully swatted his rear with her small hand. Go to sleep. Subsequently, she turned around and called for Kexi U, the embroiderer, and the others, allowing them to board a carriage and depart. Crown Prince Mo stood frozen for a considerable moment, even the tips of his ears involuntarily turned crimson. It took a while for her words to fully register. Slash oh heavens, did Her Excellency Lady Kiyoki Ao just tease me? Question mark slash. Little did Kiao Mu know that she had inadvertently taken liberties with a certain someone. She had been somewhat absent-minded and thoughtless. Just as she was about to enter the carriage and set off, Chi Xiu Ang Xuan's delighted screech interrupted her chain of thought. Oh dear, my dear Kiao Kiao. Chi Xiu Ang Xuan hopped onto the carriage, embracing her tightly and nearly planting a kiss on her. I missed you so much, Kiao Kiao. Kiao Mu quickly covered her mouth with her hand and exclaimed in an uncontrollable manner, You, hold on right there. You guys have already crossed a line. Uck, you reek. Hurry up and go take a bath. Yes, indeed. Chi Xiu Ang Xuan nodded. She hiked up her sleeve and took a whiff, almost making herself swoon from the odor. Wow, I seriously reek. Kiao Mu felt a mix of amusement and exasperation. She gently pushed away the chubby face and turned to address the group that had gathered around. Little Fatty, Mart Ah, Duan Mu King, and the others. I've arranged rooms for all of you. Eunuch Zhao, please guide them to the Viscount's quarters to freshen up and rest. Of course. Everyone, this way please. Kiao Kiao, are you heading out? Wait for me, I'll join you. No need. You've been leveling up for quite a while, so take a day to rest. I'll be back in the evening, so I'll take my leave now. Chapter 2707 Her Excellency Lady Kiao Kiao doesn't care. Kiao Mu recoiled from the pungent aroma that lingered after Chi Xiu Ang Xuan's quilting session. With a swift motion, she tugged down the curtain and called out, Let's move, quickly. Her hurried retreat suggested a sense of urgency. The Marta Pagoda burst into laughter, playfully taunting Chi Xiu Ang Xuan, you've whisked her away with your unique fragrance. Upon hearing this, Chi Xiu Ang Xuan and Chi Xiu Ang Xuan exchanged irritated huffs. You claim not to be malodorous. Take a whiff of yourself, your stench surpasses mine a hundredfold, you reek. Dot. Amidst the commotion, Eunuch Zha arranged for attendants to guide them to their respective quarters for bathing and rest. Meanwhile, Kiao Mu sat alone in the carriage. As thoughts of Xu Ang Xuan and the others flooded her mind, an involuntary smile crept onto her lips. In a previous instance, their advancement within the Mu clan's rear mountain had garnered quite a stir. Even Patriarch Mu had been roused personally venturing to the rear mountain to inquire. Upon discovering that their young companions had made progress here, the venerable elder thoughtfully instructed the entire Mu clan to avoid disturbing them. This time, Kiao Mu celebrated the success of Xu Ang Xuan and the others even more than anyone else. A cursory assessment had revealed their cultivation levels. Xu Ang Xuan had reached the sixth stage of the spiritual realm. Little Fatty Mart Ah, Lu Yu, Puatao, and Jiang Shaoxin had all ascended to the ninth stage of the spiritual realm. Only Duan Mu King's cultivation remained inscrutable. It was apparent that Duan Mu King's cultivation now surpassed her own. With the prospect of reuniting with her companions for future adventures, Kiao Mu's heart swelled with an ineffable joy. It would be even more wonderful if she could reunite with senior brother Situ and the others at some point. With time on her hands. Kiao Mu retrieved a poison sutra and began flipping through its pages. Nestled against the carriage's cushion, she delved into its contents, reading line by line. Truth be told, she had perused these medical texts and poison sutras countless times before. She could recall which herb corresponded to each line effortlessly. As this notion crossed her mind, 
she recollected the events of yesterday. Auntie King's mockery had insinuated that Kiao Mu lacked understanding about the intricacies of the Couture House's operations. If she were to assume control of the business, the shop would likely falter within a mere two months. Doubtless, rumors had begun to circulate by now. Kiao Mu needn't even make inquiries to ascertain that Miss Chen, whom she had encountered at the Couture House yesterday, would seize this opportunity to tarnish her reputation. Yet, this was of little consequence. For someone of immense wealth, the continued smooth operation of the modest Xioxiao Couture House was hardly a significant concern. Her real objective was to wrest it back from Mu Jingfeng's grasp. Whether she could adeptly manage it was beside the point. She couldn't allow Mu Jingfeng to reap the benefits of this establishment's prosperity. After careful consideration, she beckoned her divine consciousness ushering it into her inner realm to peruse its contents. Furthermore, she summoned her standard class divine consciousness apparition, a construct that autonomously enhanced her divine consciousness, to enter her inner world, extending its reach by a third of a centimeter. As her consciousness pool underwent evolution, her spiritual conscious apparition naturally transcended into a divine consciousness apparition. Moreover, since her inner world had expanded to encompass 500 cubic meters. Not only did it house an impressive collection of 3,000 sculptures, but piles of gold and silver were strewn in every corner. In fact, even if she were to introduce her apparition alongside her divine consciousness, finding a standing spot would be a challenge in itself. She found herself treading upon a mound composed of gold, silver, pearls, and jade, an exasperating predicament to say the least. Every encounter with her inner world triggered a bout of headaches. Consequently, she made an effort to avoid unveiling its contents whenever feasible. With her conscious pool now firmly entrenched in the divine realm, withdrawing items from her inner world posed no difficulty whatsoever. Recollection prompted her to recall the presence of several diminutive bronze chests concealed beneath the heap of pearls and jade. Guiding her divine conscious apparition to sift through the precious gems, her eyes eventually fell upon her trusty all-purpose food box once again. Chapter 2708 Eyes Rolling You might as well summon her ethereal consciousness and manifest it to open the versatile food box, retrieving a meat bun from within. Without any hesitation, she took a bite, not needing to vocalize it. The bun was hot and soft, its flavor particularly satisfying. It was no wonder Xiaolina couldn't stop raving about these buns after having just one. Dot. Kiao Mu's gaze softened as thoughts of her tender, affectionate younger sister Lilsis crossed her mind. Her attention shifted to the row of three thousand stone statues, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Finally, an empty space emerged behind the stone sculpture. Aside from the peculiar snake-shaped figure, its form seemingly in a howling stance towards the sky, there stood Aunt Master Jin, pacing back and forth as if afflicted with ADHD. Ever since the gold giant Aunt Master had emerged to assist Kiyokiao previously, she had been contained within Kiyokiao's inner world, restricted to a distance of 500 meters. It was as if this massive gold giant couldn't cease its ceaseless pacing around the snake sculpture, a behavior that left Kiyokiao perpetually vexed. Kiyao Mu felt a growing sense of frustration. Just as she was about to shift her gaze elsewhere, her attention abruptly froze her ethereal consciousness locking onto the serpent-shaped stone sculpture. Could it be a figment of her imagination? Had she truly witnessed the rock-like eyes of the serpent sculpture moving, as though its gaze had shifted beneath its stone eyelids? No need to frighten herself unnecessarily. With caution, Kiao Mu scrutinized the serpent sculpture once more. As it remained utterly motionless, she finally let out a sigh of relief. It must have been her mind playing tricks on her earlier. She chided herself for allowing her imagination to run wild and torment her throughout the day. Kiao Mu couldn't help but stifle a chuckle at her own timidity. She retracted her ethereal consciousness and shifted her attention to the manifestation of it, which was currently sifting through a heap of jewels, searching for a small bronze chest. Eventually, the diminutive manifestation managed to uncover several small bronze chests nestled within the treasure pile. For some inexplicable reason, an odd sensation brushed against Kiao Mu's heart. A sense lingered that beneath the visible layers, 
Around ten or so of these small bronze hued chests remained hidden. Concurrently, a curiosity compelled her to examine their contents. Driven by this intrigue, she unlatched one of the chests, revealing an assortment of books and handwritten letters within. The collection of books was substantial. Kiyomu's ethereal consciousness adjusted, selecting three of the boxes. With deliberate intent, she dispatched her consciousness back to Paradise Planet, resuming her training of the ethereal consciousness. The purpose of these books and letters eluded her. As Kiao Mu perused through them, she discovered an array of poison suitors and pharmacopeias that stirred a deep sense of familiarity. Selecting a book at random, she skimmed through its pages. The faint traces of prior study were evident, generating a faint echo of recognition within her. Subsequently, she seized a brush and paper, writing for a moment before setting them down. Comparing her handwriting to the text in the book, she nodded in affirmation. Despite nuances, both forms of script undoubtedly belonged to her. Where once her penmanship was somewhat nascent, now it exuded an elevated grace and sophistication, embodying both form and essence. With a sigh of relief, Kiyomu retrieved a handwritten letter. As she unfolded it, her eyes involuntarily welled with tears. Indeed, it was a letter penned by her master. Notably, the characters Xu and Huang were inscribed on the lower left corner of the opening page. She perused through several manuals, absorbing their contents. One detailed techniques for training individuals and managing a workforce, while another outlined a swift path to becoming a shopona. The texts encompassed everything from the intricacies of purchasing and selling establishments to adeptly selecting prime locations and adorning interiors with meticulous precision. Yet, the most intriguing manuscript expounded upon the operation of a restaurant. Within its pages lay instructions for arranging outdoor seating standardizing the attire of shop assistants, elevating recipes to a sophisticated level, and more. Curiously, these methodologies bore an uncanny resemblance to those of eldest Madame Muse. Kiao Muse eyes flickered, Chapter 2709 Masters One Heart. There were numerous unfamiliar dishes featured in this book, many of which were entirely new to her. Beneath the descriptions were comments in small print, along with the names of the dishes and their corresponding cooking techniques. Most of these annotations indicated the signature dishes of various restaurants across the continent, along with their respective specialties. Kiyomu found herself utterly astonished. Dot. Turning the page, she encountered another section filled with elaborate sketches of jewelry and similar adornments. Among these were also plush toys crafted to resemble charming little animals. Within these pages were meticulous records of an array of innovative toys. Without much thought, Kiao Mu proceeded to the next page and was met with an assortment of uniquely designed necklaces. Strangely enough, they seemed to possess the same allure as the exclusive pieces found at Couture House. Slash what was happening here question mark slash. In her bewildered state, she caught sight of a young girl, approximately seven or eight years old, seated at a table covered with pristine white rice paper. The child lifted her small head and inquired in a hushed tone, Master, Master, do you intend to memorize all of this little treasure? Your main focus should be on memorizing the medical canon and the poison sutra. The remaining content is optional. Just retain a general understanding. If the need arises, you can always refer back to it. Master, Master, how do you manage to draw these cute little animals so skillfully? What are they? Do you find them appealing? Perhaps I'll have your Aunt Master create a miniature yellow duck stuffed toy for you one day. Master, Master, I am fond of this pig. Ah. Why does the mini pig capture your interest? The little yellow duck is much more visually pleasing than a pig. I simply have an affinity for this little piggy. Very well, on another occasion, I'll have your aunt master fashion one for you. Master, why haven't you crafted one for little treasure? Could Xu An Huang admit to being less skilled? Clearly, that wasn't an option. Indeed, her craftsmanship didn't quite measure up to junior sister Nitans. Ironically. There was a junior sister who seemed capable of captivating people. Well, well, my little treasure, have you devoured the lollipop that master prepared for you the last time? Avoid excessive candy, my dear. It's detrimental to your teeth. A voice wafted in. Kiao Mu recognized it as Aunt Master Nitan's voice. PSH, 
pay no heed to your aunt master. We didn't indulge excessively, right? Xu An Huang, don't corrupt the child's morals. Address me as senior sister. You insolent rascal, thud. The carriage came to a halt. Kiao Mu's mind wandered. When she refocused, she realized that the carriage had already stopped. Swiftly, she stowed away the treasure and written letters and returned them to Tung's leather chest, safeguarding them within her inner world. A misty scene unfolded ahead. Crown Prince Consort, we've reached the Couture House, Keixi Wu gently reminded, parting the carriage curtain for the Crown Prince Consort. With a glance, he spotted the young lady kneeling on the carriage's cushion. Her eyes were reddened, and a misty quality had overtaken them. She appeared rather pitiable, akin to a small creature. Keixi Wu's embroidery needles grew jittery, her gaze darting around the carriage before she promptly inquired. Crown Prince Consort, what has happened? The young Crown Prince Consort's sorrowful and pained expression truly evoked a sense of empathy. It's nothing. The young Crown Prince Consort collected herself, giving a slight sniff. She grasped Keixi Wu's hand adorned with embroidery and stepped out of the carriage. Just sometimes, when memories of the past resurface, it brings forth a tinge of wistfulness and pain. Keixi Wu, the embroiderer, let out a sigh of relief a smile gracing her lips naturally. Crown Prince Consort, we've recently reclaimed numerous assets, and your companions have all progressed smoothly. There are more joys to be celebrated than sorrows, aren't there? From the sidelines, Keiki also chimed in with a cheerful tone, absolutely, Crown Prince Consort, despondency has no place. Today, our struggle continues. Chapter 2710 Blacklist Them The young crown prince consort burst into laughter as she caught sight of them, unable to contain her amusement. Upon hearing the words of the quilt maid servants, her heart noticeably eased. She nodded and replied, Your words do indeed make sense. Keiki couldn't stifle her giggles and covered her mouth. Then, shall we proceed inside? Dot. Agreeing. The young crown prince consort led the two companions through the main entrance of the couture house, mustering her resolve. Yuna Chen followed along, somewhat cluelessly. As they stepped inside, they immediately sensed an unusual atmosphere. It must be noted that the interior of the shop appeared unexpectedly somber, which took them aback. When the shopkeeper responsible for couture house got wind of the crown prince consort's presence, he promptly emerged to extend his welcome. Upon catching sight of the young crown prince consort, he lowered his head with a remorseful expression. This humble servant has failed in his duties. Business at Couture House has experienced a noticeable decline today. Despite the approaching noon, the shop remains devoid of customers. The young crown prince consort waved her hand, signaling for him to rise and speak. All of this seemed rather unjustifiable. Situated along Chiel Boulevard, Couture House's prime location surpassed even that of butterfly pavilions. The storefront was met with a constant stream of passers-by, and who among the noble ladies and young misses out shopping could resist the allure of jewelry? Even if just browsing, they'd step inside, wouldn't they? Yet, on this particular day and time, no one had crossed the threshold. Clearly, external factors were at play. The shopkeeper, well versed in his trade, had already dispatched inquiries through his staff. Seeing the arrival of the Crown Prince Consort, he swiftly ushered them to their seats and arranged for tea to be served. In due course, the assistants tasked with gathering information returned, their expressions perplexed, as they reported their findings to the senior shopkeeper. This humble servant made inquiries with a fellow villager and uncovered some information. That villager happened to be in the service of the Gu family's young master. I learned that young Madame Gu from the Gu family has united with several other noble ladies to orchestrate a boycott against our couture house. Th they have claimed. As the young assistant conveyed this, he tentatively glanced up at the young crown prince consort his eyes inadvertently meeting hers. This accidental meeting left him somewhat flustered. The young crown prince consort possessed an exquisite beauty that resembled a cold jade sculpture. How could he dare to hold her gaze any longer? He quickly lowered his head, avoiding eye contact. Speak, Kiao Mu instructed, aware of his apprehension. Her tone was dry as she stated, you have my permission to speak freely. Yes, the assistant responded feeling his heart sink. He considered his phrasing and hurriedly continued, 
these noble ladies have expressed the opinion that Crown Prince Consort, coming as you do from a, ahem, humble mountain village in the lower star domain, presents a rather unremarkable appearance. They fear that if they were to patronize our establishment, it might, um, lower their social standing. Absurd. The shopkeeper couldn't contain his outrage and blurted out, utterly preposterous. Slash how dare they impugn the crown prince consort in such a manner. It's as if they're seeking their own downfall. Slash. Meanwhile, the young crown prince consort appeared relatively unperturbed. She commented with nonchalance, take note of the names of those noble ladies and add them to the blacklist. Under my patronage, they shall receive no welcome within these walls. Yes. The young assistant affirmed with determination. He resolved to commit each name to memory and would subsequently provide the list to the shopkeeper. Rest assured, everyone, even if the shop experiences financial setbacks, I shall continue to provide support, the young crown prince consort assured in a composed tone. Things will eventually take a turn for the better. Cake Siu, engrossed in her embroidery work, couldn't help but feel a surge of sympathy for her mistress. From her perspective, the crown prince consort never actively sought to provoke others. Despite her seemingly indifferent attitude towards people, she was, in fact, well versed in courtesy and adeptly managed various situations. Her noble status never led her to perceive her servants as superior to others. It truly puzzled her why those noble ladies persistently plotted against the crown prince consort especially when they seemingly had an abundance of leisure time after satiating their own needs.